ICSC 3200. So this is video two uh, in the series that's going to cover uh, Friday and Monday's lecture on chapter two. Um, all right, so what we're going to do in this video at the very least, we are going to rename or refactor, and then we are going to uh, start our data class. Um, so I have made these changes so that I'm matching the IDs on the other side in activity main. Uh, let's see. Ooh, let's change this. Uh, I said I was done with this file, but this is a generic ID that I want to change. We're going to call that message box. Um, so glad I came back here and checked. But we do have white robot, red robot, and yellow robot. So we made more meaningful IDs on that side. And over here, I also want some more meaningful uh, variable names. So image view one, I'm going to right click and I'm going to refactor and I'm going to rename and we are going to call this red robot image and I'll go ahead and hit enter and you see that it changes in multiple spots. Um, you can of course always just change the variable and then copy and paste it and sometimes I, um, I mess up this refactoring step and I have to do that anyway. So white uh, robot image and look at that I was just talking and forgot to refactor and so I basically have these errors show up because I didn't do this with the refactor way all right so I will just copy this and paste a bunch of times all right that was weird copy paste I can see the uh, errors up here get smaller and smaller, the number count. And now it's gone, so I know I've done that successfully. Okay, so I planned to screw up once. I just screwed up earlier than I thought. So we're going to take this. We are going to uh, refactor, and we're going to rename, and this is going to be yellow robot image. Hit enter, and it changes everywhere. Okay, that's good. All right, so we're going to create a data class so we can use our robots as a model for our program. Uh, we are going to do this by under apps, under Java, we're going to right click on our uh, whatever you have here. Not the, these two that have like a grayed out for Android test or test, but the top one here, um, com.bignerdranch.android, et cetera, for, for me. Could be something different for you. So we're going to go new, and then we're going to Kotlin class file, and we are going to select data class. If you forget to select data class, it's not a big deal. Uh, once you start typing the, the words data, then it uh, it'll automatically become a data class. Uh, but it won't give you the beginning um, curly braces, which is kind of nice. Uh, and we're going to call this a robot class. So this is kind of like where we're going to, well, it is where we're going to put our constructor for making robot objects. All right, so when we get started here, we're going to have two different uh, values that robot is going to keep track of. Uh, the first one is going to be val, not var. It's going to be consistent. Uh, and this is going to be something like robot, uh, robot message resource. Um, again, may have named this something completely different last time, but that's okay. Um, it, it will be of type int. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, the last thing we're going to change is var, or put in, keep track of, var my turn, and that will be of type boolean. So that one's pretty obvious. Uh, is it this robot's turn or not? Red robot starts off. Well, actually, they're all going to start off with a no. Uh, but be large, and after that, anybody else that is a yes will be large, and the nose, the, the false boolean my turn will be small. That's the goal. We'll get there in a bit. Okay, so robot message resource that is basically going to um, be storing the red robot message, the white robot message, etc., and it is going to be a string, and yet we say it is uh, int. Um, and that's because this is uh, going to be an ID generated by the R class, and um, IDs are always ints. So it feels a little counterintuitive at first, but 
it works. OK, so this is actually good for now. Uh, it will get changed before we're done. Um, all right, so we are going to go into our main activity, and we are going to start making robots. We're going to we're going to make our robots in a list. We're going to go private val robots, and we should already have these string resources created, so we don't need to do late init and create it later. Uh, the resources should all be generated as the activity gets made. Um, so private val robots is equal to list of, and um, let's see. We are going to make three robots. And so we're going to call the robot constructor, which we just made in the data class. And it is going to have something and then false. Uh, that something is going to be an error for now, but that's OK. Um, and you know, I can just copy and paste this. Look, it, said it now knows that my turn is false, but it doesn't understand why I put uh, a blank there to begin with. We'll get rid of that last comma. All right. So my, my turn will be set to false for all of the robots. I suppose I could start my game with one of them being large, in which case I would go like true false false, but that isn't the design I had in mind. All right, so we are going to erase this underscore. Now in Kotlin, if, um, if you have functions where you don't necessarily have to use a parameter, you can get by with an underscore to say, I'm just ignoring this. But when we created our data class, we didn't set it up that way. So this is um, reporting as an error. All right, so we are going to put in r.string. And then the red robot message. OK, so now the red robot has, uh, is keeping track of its uh, string resource for its message. And we're going to do that for the other guys. r.string dot white robot message and r.string dot yellow robot message. OK. Um, now this is grayed out because we haven't used robots. Uh, and we talked about list of. Uh, list of is an immutable list. So I can't like take out a robot or, um, or put in an extra robot. I can, however, um, change this attribute from true to false. I haven't changed the robots. I just changed an attribute of the robot. All right, um, I'm going to do one more thing before I leave this video. Hopefully, it hasn't gotten too large. I'm going to show you, like I did in class, that we have a, a structure that kind of parrots the if, else, if, else. And that is the when structure. And I'm going to go when turn count. Um, and then I'm going to put a begin curly brace. And I'm going to say when the turn count is 1 and then arrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the, the message text. OK, well, I can't do that yet because I haven't wired it up. So I'll go placeholder 1 for now. And this is still an error because it's not like it understands why I'm returning a, why I have a string in there. Um, and so since that is an error, all right, so placeholder 1, let's try that. OK. There we go. Um, so I will go, OK. So I didn't have to place a comma, no semicolon, anything. I hit Enter. This ends up in the right spot. It's got a nice friendly syntax, this when structure. It is um, a when is used in Python. And uh, it's like the switch uh, statement in Java. But I do like the syntax better than the switch statement. And then I'll go placeholder 2. Placeholder three, okay, and and I can put in else here, and I'll go placeholder other. All right, so that is like a if else or 
if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else structure. Typically, if you have uh, multiple else ifs, then maybe you want to go with this when structure. All right, let's get this wired up. This is for the message box. So we're going to come up here. I'm going to go private late init var and message box will be of type uh, text view. And now in the on create, let's set it to uh, the find view by ID. So message box equals find view by ID r dot ID dot. And this is why I'm glad I went back and found that I didn't change that um, ID on the other side in our activity underscore main. Now it's all hooked up. So this placeholder one is going to say message box dot set text to red turn. Okay, now this is temporary. I just want to show you that it works. And then we are going to do this again and again. Now, uh, we have it so that the strings are storing those. Um, and I guess they also have as a string resource. So I could just go at string forward slash and then red. Uh, it's not showing up. Red robot message. Oh, that's because I have it in double quotes. Um, actually, it's because I need to go r.string. There we go. Uh, OK, so I like this a little bit better, even though this is all going to go away. So r.string.white robot message. And yellow. And this, we hit an error. Um, so I'll keep this as a hard string and say error, question mark. All right, so let's run this. 